Progret Racing. Show us your tips. Daggy and Beaver with you for the first Group 1 meeting of the new year. As we head to Sandown Hillside tomorrow, Beaver. Bunch of shit meetings in Melbourne and bam, look at this one. It's great. What's going on? Yes. Yeah, it's a great meeting, isn't it? Um, particularly the second half of the card. Um, I, I, you know, looking through the form, I found the first part of the card quite tricky. Mm. Um, similarly in Sydney, but uh, some of the later races, um, some of the top horses are uh, coming back and, um, yeah, um, while they're good cards. Um, yeah, great racing ahead. And I've uh, spoken this week. How's the week treated you? What's... Um Pick the eyes out of Packenham last night. Yeah, geez, I went well at Packenham last night. I gave uh, three tips and, and all saluted, and then uh, my value bet uh, just just got beaten in the led most of the way in the last, and uh, got beaten on the line, which was disappointing. Just uh, gave out at the end, but uh, good night there. Beautiful. Uh, we'll kick. Well, we'll kick off as I said at Hillside now, which is hosting the meetings for Caulfield for the time being. The rail moves into the. Uh, uh, where are we moving now? 10 metre mark, that's right. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's, it. Hillside's nice and big and should be fairly fair, but um, we'll keep an eye on the inside to see how we go there. Warm weather, good track. Uh, all horses should get their chance as usual there. We kick off with a benchmark 78 over the 2400. How are you going to start the day? Yeah, an interesting little affair here because most of these horses um, have raced against each other um, in previous starts. I just thought Wahimi Tala was pretty good last start, and I thought uh, no reason it can't win again. Uh, kind of like the $8.50, $9 price, and last five starts has been first or second. Um, can't see why it wouldn't finish in the in the money up near the top again, so each way all day for me. Beautiful. Uh, I agree. I think there's two hopes. Uh, Wahimi Tala on top uh, used a 2,400-metre run at Two back when it met so unusual here to win last time. I think it does the same again. Maps pretty well again. And around $8.50, easy bet to have. And I will cover with so unusual, who did beat it last time out, months between runs and a nice trial. I think they're the only two hopes. So I'm, if they all get their chances, I suggest they will. Um, pretty good way to start the day, get us off to a nice bank. We kick off with the first of the Group 2s, the Autumn Stakes, over 1,400 metres up next. I suppose we don't kick off, but it's up next, where um, we see that there are good some of the good three-year-olds returning, and I like the price around the top two here. Um, I've got Virtuous Circle on top. It's 18 bucks. I think the trials have been good. I think what it did last prep was pretty good, including winning a similar race over 1,500 fresh last time out. As I said, it's a big price, and I think Mr Maestro can run a place here around the $14 mark. Is probably the best horse. Went out to the Derby trip last time. I think it's more of a mile or 2,000 metre horse, but I think this suits. I think the tail's a little long, and I think some of the shorties, uh, while they've trolled okay, are, are just a bit, you know, I just think the price around the other two um, is good here, and some of these could end up back at midweek form soon enough. Am I wrong, Beaver? Uh... Uh, you're allowed to tell me. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say you're wrong. I think this is a really deep race, right? Because as you said, some of those down in the market, they're quality horses that have run well in, in good company. I just went for the horse that's up and running at the moment, Calico Jack. Mm -hmm. um, I think its last two runs have been ultra impressive, obviously, and we could company that this, but I just think it's now it's broken through. It's just clicked for it. Um, it's going to jump on speed here, and I think it's going to give him something to catch, gets a little bit of weight relief from its last win here, um, 1,400 metres fine. I think it's going to be super hard to beat and it's got the right trainer, so good chance, Calico Jack for me. Cool. It is a classic, uh, we get them in both states, a classic sort of best horses versus fit horses meeting, isn't it? Yeah. But um, obviously that's the way you're going. We get to the first of the two Blue Diamond preludes. The boys are up first, 1,100 metres, group three. And we see the return of, um, I think, a nice horse here in Barber. Uh, I think it's been one of the most impressive two-year-olds to date. The form's stacked up around it. The trolls have been fantastic. My fear is, my only fear is Jamie Carter just plonks outside lead and gets it beat while it's not quite fit enough. But uh, I do have it on top. I think it's the best horse. And I got an eye on Amigo, the million-dollar, all but a million-dollar colt, um, debuting down the bottom there. Trolls have been not too bad. Uh, Luke Nolan booked, but... Good race. Interesting to see how but we've got two Perth two-year-olds coming over. Interesting to see how they stack up too. But um, sticking with blue colours, it's a bit of a blue day 
throughout the afternoon. Beva, what have you made of this? Yeah, I found it hard to split them, but I did go for Barber. I think you're right. Um, that is the con- the only concern is where Carl puts it, if it's outside the lead and it, is it fit enough. Um, but I have, do have it on top. I think it's it's the class horse here and the one to watch. Um, but certainly Brave Halo has um, done everything right in its preparation, comes over from Ascot, um, and those horses do have a knack of bobbing up and running well. So I've got Oliver aboard, but Barbara on top for me, hard to get a line on some of the other ones. Um, the race brigade don't look to be able to beat those, so unless something pops up out of the... Unraised Brigade, uh, they're the two for me. Cool. The girls are up next over 1,100 metres, Group 2 for the Phillies. What about this race? Yeah, it's an interesting one as well, right? There's lots of horses here. I thought, I just thought the favourite was a little bit skinny um, at the 5-4. to four. Uh, Looks a good horse and has run nicely. Uh, its last start win was pretty good. I went for the, the second favourite, Cigar Flick, yep. um, from the... Wallace Stable um, thought its first up win was brilliant at Canterbury, um, won pretty comfortably. And then in the Group 3, um, Rose Hill, it was only a couple of lengths behind learning to fly. I think it will have improved from that. And now down in Melbourne, uh, that's a good pointer for me. Um, so I think it can run well. drawn wide, so it's going to need a little bit of luck there. But um, I got it on top. And obviously the... The Friedman horses, one start, one win. I think it can run well as well around the $10 mark. I, I went away from the lead up here, um, which left me with the two with uh, the two different four lines, which one is Cigar Flick. You've covered that off well. Um, but I have got Charmstone on top. I think it was a top win before it went out. Uh, I think the trolls have been fantastic. And Mark Zara stuck to it. I think he's booked to ride light in the Blue Diamond itself. So that's a... Shows the opinion he's got there. I think this is a, a very nice filly and it's going to be very hard to beat. And, yeah, some of that form out of the preview hasn't stacked up already. So um, sticking with Charmstone um, on top, clearly, from Cigar Flick, just because that Sydney form, as we'll get to later on, I think learning to fly might be a very good horse. So that's the way I've seen the two preludes. The Kevin Hayes Stakes comes up next over the 1,100 metres, another Group 3, where... I have, again, gone a little bit wide here. I'm looking fresh in this one. And I've looked to the two Snowden runners. I think Gennady did some nice stuff last prep. Trials have been fantastic coming back here. Inside gate for Oli pushes up underneath and can perhaps put a bit of pressure on She Dances there. And um, around a $12 mark, I think it's a nice bet. And I'm going to also cover Scythera, the stable mate, who uh, bled and had a bit of time off, but... Trial's coming back here, had a tick over Troll, then a bounced out and led in the next one and looked really good. And um, I think it's going to be hard to beat at 16 bucks. It was a nice horse last time in. Just going Sydney form and fresh here. So am I on the right track, Beaver? Look, it's a deep, it's a deep race here. Um, again, lots of, lots of good chances, as you pointed out there. A couple down in there. I just think the She's Dancers is, is a really good, speedy, customer um, and super hard to beat here. I think if it wasn't, if it was drawn closer to the fence, I think you'd probably see it down to $4 instead of $6. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the only concern, but it's probably got enough uh, speed here to jump and run and probably get over there. It just depends how much car has to use it up. I bet you I think it's it outside lead. She'll sit outside lead with it. You reckon? Yeah. It's just what she um, does. That's a bit of a concern. I, I hope she goes to the front and... Oh, so do I, but yeah. It, if it does, I think it's going to be super hard to beat. Um, and then, as you said, there's a number of different horses here returning. I thought Queen of the Ball uh, could run well as well. Um, come down the middle of the track if if it's tuned up enough. But I've got She's Dancers on top. Um, just a bit, uh, again, fitness edge, speedy enough, um, 1,100 suits. Any other, any other one I'll mention, I guess, for early quarters is say Probably should have almost beaten Jigsaw last time out. And... Um Drawn inside here, punches up again, a bit more of his pace factor that um, she dances has to get around. So uh, yeah, all going. Good, good race too. Good race. Um, Very good. Looking forward to it. The Rubiton's up next, again over the 1,100 metres. A group two for the older ones. And, geez, I loved what Uncon- Uncommon James did last start at Caulfield before it had a bit of a setback. Comes here. The trial since was beautiful. Comes down here, rolls forward. 
might be a very nice horse. Um, keen to be with it. Scared of um, Chain of Lightning, uh, but similarly, probably ends up just bobbing out, just uh, bobbing underneath and having a bit of an issue first up with fitness. And I thought the forgotten horse here, Marine One, trolled really well and um, did good stuff last prep. And is ten dollars with Mark Zara. Foolish to leave that one out. So I think we do see a good horse though in Uncommon James Beaver. Yeah, looks a good one, doesn't he? Um, I've got it on top as well. Actually, I think three dollars fifty is not about not about price because yeah. it could well be the best sprinter we've got going around at the moment. And the way it won its uh, last couple of races, or particularly when it came to Caulfield, um, you know, you were a bit unsure if it was up to that class. But the way it won that was pretty impressive, and they put it straight out after that. Um, I think it had a few problems, but uh, here we go. Let's see how. I don't know. It'll start three fifty. I think there might be a bit of money for it. Um, we know Chain of Lightning's good and goes well fresh, so it will run well. I thought Lofty Strike could run well as well. Um, it ran some really nice races last preparation, uh, particularly in Group Ones, and was only a length off uh, Rock and Horse in the down at the New Market, I think that was, and then prior to that, finished pretty close to In Secret. So I think it's got some ability. And I expect it to have uh, handy preparations, but um, yeah, uncommon James on top for me. I like this horse. Beauty. Uh, the Group One is up next. The Wait for Age fourteen hundred meters. Uh, CF Four Stakes won last year by Tefane uh, in the past by the likes of Moment of Change, All Too Hard, Black Caviar, and Typhoon Tracy, amongst others. Um, how are you seeing the first Group One of the year? Yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? Um, some good horses here. I'm going for I'm Thunderstruck. Um, going to have it on top. I think this race sets up nicely for it. Uh, again, one of, one of those horses that I, I really like. But it, it's runs last preparation were outstanding. Um, finishing second behind Enemo. Uh, got up to, you know, sort of the 2,000 metre range. And um, But this is a great uh, first up uh, race for it. Uh, 1,400 suits, the nice big track. It'll be storming home with Jack and I. Um, and I think there'll be enough pace on for to help those two horses, but I'm thunderstruck on top. Um, and then I think Gentleman Roy can run a nice race if he gets uh, an easy enough lead. Um, it's always hard to get past. I'm sort of looking at this as I've, I've gone a little bit map based here, and I th I just love the run Tuvalu is going to get. I think it's going to launch straight into the back of Gentleman Roy. It's going to have uh, first crack at it on the top of the bend there. And if they can control it, I think it's going to be hard to beat here. I like the $6 around for it. Uh, we saw what it did first up, or we saw what it did all the way through last prep. Um, that form is good form. Uh, from Jackano, who uh, looked gone about the 300 metre mark last time, quite a win, and is a, on the way to being a star potentially. So am scared of it. And. Uh, yeah, I think Nugget still has a bit of upside here too. Fresh up and see how it runs. But I think Tuvalu's a, a good each-way play here. In a, again, another good race. The Carlian Cup is up next over the mile, a group three affair. Beaver, what do you like in this one? Yeah, look, I, don't, I think there's limited chances in this because some of these horses down in the market, and Kayan, Young Werther, Smoke and Romans, they're all sort of preparing for something longer. Um, I've gone for Sunshine Rising, yep. uh, resuming here. I think it's a really good chance. Um, liked its runs, uh, last preparation, trialed really well. Liked the look of it in the trial. Um, 1,600 suits first up, and I think it gets the right run here. Um, getting the sitting shot in corner pocket, so I think it'll be super hard to beat. Sunshine Rising on top for me. Uh, I've got the market in the right order. I've got corner pocket on top, cruising around here. Agree with what you've said. This is a this is a bunch of stays resuming, looking for something else. Uh, the fit and firing horse uh, on the inside there under Ollie. I think it's going to be super hard to beat with um uh, with Ollie going on. Actually, you've gone uh, Stockdale bait. Stockdale now gets Damien Oliver in a group two. So happy days, and scared of Sunshine Rising. Uh, all its runs in Australia have been good, and it's trialed again fantastically since. Uh, I think they're the two, and they're the, the only two I probably will entertain here. Now you've jumped off Young Werther. Watch you come and win, Beaver, just for you. Yeah, great. I'll be chuffed about that. Yeah, but make, no, make it, you won't, it won't be happening. It won't be happening. <laughs> All right. I'm sure of it. No, I know. After, what was the one on Wednesday that won? 
that I jumped off. Ah, who cares? 1,400 metre benchmark, 84. Uh, it finishes the day here, and I like this little finish here. I think there's three main chances. Uh, the Japanese horse Sparkle uh, has trialled really well for this and hits a very winnable race first up around the $9 mark. Blake Shin on. Uh, I think it does run well here. Netanyahu, so honest, will be on pace and will run in the top three again. Hasn't missed a spot this prep and just keeps putting itself up there. And going along well. And Savannah Cloud back in control, dropping from a benchmark 100. Leader back in grade here. Ran quite well behind pounding there. Um, comes here inside. Should get a, a nice enough run along the fence from the inside gate. And around the $7.50 mark again is nice. I think they're the three I'll be entertaining in the quaddy. And fairly certain that they'll give me a nice sight. What have you made of this, Beaver? Yeah, um, I've gone for Sparkle as well. Cool. I really yeah. like the trial, um, and this is a very winnable race. Uh, it's uh, only lightly raced, um, comes from Japan, where uh, these horses generally show up in Australia when they come from there. Um, got the right trainer, got the right jockey, drawn a little awkwardly, but I think it's still good enough to beat these in what looks like an open race. Um, and I thought the winner blowing uh, was good last start, showed that it was back, and I think it can run well, um, so I'd be saving on it. Beautiful. For progroupracing.com.au, of course, check them out for their free tips, extensive guides, and much, much more. Give us your CF4 Stakes Day Quaddy. Yeah, first leg, race six, I've gone. Number five, Uncommon James. Number six, Chain of Lightning. Number 12, Lofty Strike. In the second leg, race seven, I've gone. Number one, I'm Thunderstruck. Number three, Tuvalu. Number seven, Gentleman Roy. Number 10, Jackana. I think the winner will come from that. Um, in the third leg, I've gone number five, Corner Pocket. Number six, Sunshine Rising. Number 13, Keats. And number 15, Deny Knowledge. And in the last leg, I've gone number one, Savannah Crowd, Cloud. Number three, Here to Shock. Number eight, Sparkle. Number 13, Blow In. And number 14, Daily Bugle. Beautiful. Your best in value. Yeah, my best bet is race six, number five, Uncommon James. And my value bet is race nine, number eight, Sparkle. I'm going to make my best race four, number one, Charmstone, and value race five, number 11, Gennady, on a fantastic day's racing from Sandown. Uh, something that's perhaps been suggested to us is, we might look at for the next few weeks, is maybe throwing out a bit of a punters club between us, see how we go over autumn. So we'll talk about that, maybe start that next week, have 100 bucks each week to spend, see how we go. Beautiful. All right. Uh, we might even, even throw those bets on, Beaver, just for something to do. Sounds like a plan. Novel concept, hey, actually backing, betting. Um, all right, just kidding. I do my ass all the time. All right, Randwick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's head down to Randwick where they've missed the worst of the rain in Sydney. Uh, soft five, got about 30 mil overnight, I think. Hot day tomorrow. Hoping uh, there's not too much this afternoon and it does dry out. Rail goes true. I think what we see is what we get from Randwick. As we get to, we kick off with the babies over the first uh, 1100 metres for the two year olds. Kings of Gambit's come out. Beaver, who are you starting the day with? Yeah, look, I'm going straight for Don Cordigoni here. Um, odds on, but uh, should be hard to beat. Jay Mack aboard. Snowden's got this uh, horse tuned up after its first up win uh, on top for me. Yeah, I've got it on top as well. Am I that keen at a dollar seventy? Not right no. now. Definitely not. The 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 ones I'm scared of though are all the blue colours resuming. Uh, as I said earlier, I think it's a blue day in Sydney and uh, Remedies does map perfectly. Did some good stuff last prep and is around what, twelve bucks at the moment. And Rosillion was a nice Sydney debut off um, first time in town and then's had some nice quiet trials in his twenties. They'll both go into some exotics, but uh, I'm not, yeah, as I said, I'm probably more likely to play them each way than have a big bet at the short price on the favourite here. The second is the highway over 1,800 metres, Class 3. Have you looked at the highway this week? Uh, I had a look at this, mate. Didn't get too excited about it. Um, 
bit too tricky for me. And fair enough, me too. Uh, the third is the midway. Is this tricky as well? A thousand meter benchmark seventy two. It is tricky. I did like the one start, one win for our Kerbison. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was pretty good and presented good value here. A bit worried about the sixteen gate. Um, hopefully a couple of scratchings might bring it in a bit for me, but so uh, that's the one I had on top um, if I had to have a pick. Um, I went down looking, I started down the bottom here. Uh, you mentioned our Cobison. I, I know 900 meter Newcastle probably isn't real form, but um, was pretty impressive, comes to a very winnable race. And another Cognac's going really well and comes back out of, uh, well, stays in bent, uh, the, the, the midway grade, back to 1,000 suits and gets a nice enough sweeping run here. I think they're the two I'm going to play predominantly. I actually went going looking for Mabel and uh, Bardicelli because I'm a little bit sick and had to entertain them. Maybe back to a 1,000 metres can produce something different to what they have been. But the fresher, the younger, unexposed horses to the fore here for me. The fourth is the uh, benchmark 88 mile with the th- million-dollar bonus, apparently. So I guess there's a bit of a target here. Uh, looking at this for me, it uh, has to come overcome the inside draw, but I've got King Rattel on top. I think it's flying. I think it's going really well. Unlucky last time, and with even luck here, I think he's in the finish again, around the $5 mark, and I think Bazooka's going well too. Going to stick with those two. Probably remiss of me not to mention Bold Mac. Uh, it did win last time and beat most of these, So and J-Mac's on it. So around the $4, $55 you're probably going to tell me it's the obvious bet here, but just looking down the bottom, uh, Pace has come out with Major Arty Scratch, just looking at this, Tarza Old gets a lead. What do you make of this one for the girls? Yeah, I didn't mind King Rattel either. I thought it was the same. I thought it's going really good at the, the moment. I think probably, as long as there's a little bit of pace on, because um, it is coming back in the four to 400 metres here, but it's certainly got the most powerful finish here and we'll get the, the last shot at these, so... Uh, um, a half decent ride is going to be super hard to beat. So I had on top for the for similar reasons to you. I think it's going well. It is only a small field, so it um, doesn't have to get around too many uh, with the two scratchings now. So there's only nine in it at the moment. So um, I've got it on top. I think $5 is good value. Beautiful. The fifth is the Southern Cross Stakes, a group three over the 1,200 metres. And... I've got two key chances. Gravine is on top for me. Uh, J-Mac going on. The trolls are fantastic and maps perfectly. So on top, scared shitless of Quantico. Uh, its best probably blows these away, but is now a long time off. Uh, I believe had some issues, but the trial was very good. So the first trial was good. Second trial was just a plot around. But uh, looking fresh here, uh, the market says that's right. I've gone around Espiona and sticking with blue colours. Beaver, what have you done? Yeah, well, I've gone for Espiona. Um, uh, it's a horse that, you know, I, I do like. Last prep wasn't at its best. Um, but I think it, it looks to have uh, trialled well enough. Wasn't asked to do a lot, but uh, looked good enough to me. I think this race sets up nicely for it. I think um, it's a bit second tier. Um, is a horse that, I've, you know, it's got plenty of ability. I just find it hard to catch. Um and Quantico has still got a question mark over it. So for that reason, I've gone SBA on top to run really well. Okay. Uh, beautiful. The Inglis Millennium, over 1,100 metres, $2 million race here for the Inglis horses. Uh, keen on the favourite. Uh, I love the fact that it's drawn out wide because it means we're getting a price. I think it's a very good horse learning to fly. Uh, nice win last time out. I think that was half in second gear too. Comes to the $2 million race to be primed and ready to go. Around a three dollar mark looks fantastic for me. Uh, from down to bottom, uh, Kundalindi, Kundalindi, who will get to see the uh, Don Corleone form at the start of the day, but will have natural improvement. And I've got that listed as a main danger for my early quarter. I'll throw in Arkansas Kid, Mexico, Dorothy Gale, if you're looking wider. But um, I think this, as I said, is a nice horse, Beaver. Yeah, I think you're right too. I think it's a nice horse, and for that reason, I've got it on top as well. Um, going to be really hard to beat. Funny, I, I thought Kundalani could run well as well. Um, liked its only run, and I think it'll have some natural improvement there. And also thought Lazago could uh, figure. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, for me, learning to fly to win, obviously drawn 
the car park, um, which makes it trickier. If it was drawn well, you'd probably got sort of even money. But uh, yeah, on top for me. Beauty. The quaddy itself kicks off with the light finger stakes. A group two for the twelve hundred uh, over the twelve hundred meters for the three year old fillies. You can have first crack at this one. Uh, pretty hard to go past in secret. Um, it was, you know, it's just one of the best horses going around at the moment, and looks to be ideally drawn here. Um, taking it should be able to take care again of most of these. Um, has beat them in the past, or is just a better horse than them. So, I mean, the second favourite here is, uh, you know, done most of its work at Canberra or Doombin. Um, Run won a benchmark 78 last time, but um, it's a big step up taking on in secret. So I've got it on top. Um, main danger, uh, $34, revolutionary miss. I think it could run well first up and fresh. Lovely. Yeah, in secret on top. You've covered off well. Best horse. Did miss a tri- uh, the start in both its trial slightly, so that's maybe a concern. And interesting, Nash is on. I assume it's because um, they want someone to stick with it all the way through the prep and J-Max riding... Um, that other horse, Nature Strip, so which is no problem. Fantastic, like having Nash on, of course. Uh, on top, clearly, uh, if I was going to look away for a bit of value, I think Revolution and Miss and Cinderella Days are both great place bets around the six and seven dollar mark. Uh, Cinderella Days will be just up on pace and uh, bobbing along there. Trial was good again, um, and you mentioned Revolution and Miss, but there are a couple for your exotics more than anything else. The feature on the card is the 1400 metre Apollo Stakes, wait for age group two. Uh, we see the return of Animo. Trials are fantastic. J Max on it. It's going to map perfectly from that gate. There's not a lot of other pace here. Could even sit right on the leader's back. And I really think, well, I think it's going to win. Simple as that. F- uh, if I'm looking for exotic opportunities, I guess Laura Vindis is, is going to run a Quinella with it. There you go. Uh, Hinged might run third, getting sole control of the race. But there's no pace here. There's no opposition here. You were talking about probably the best horse in Australia. So there it is. $1.70 looks good to me, Beaver. Yeah, it's a pretty good price, I would have thought, uh, in this field. All I can say is up you go. Yep. Um, that, that's, the, that's the horse to beat here. Pretty pretty clear, not telling people much um, there. Uh, hard to find a danger, to be honest. Um, it only needs to be 80% to win this. Um, should be winning for the exotics fan girl for me. I think it can run a nice mm-hmm. little race um, with the right run. Yeah. The Triske is up next. Another Group 3, 1,200 metres for the four-year-old and up mares. Uh, is there actually any guts to Norwegian Bliss's form, Beaver? Well, it's a good question, right? Um, is there a lot of guts to it? But is there a lot of guts to what else is in this race? Um, Not really, probably. No. The second part of my question, I kind of looked at that and I thought the same as you. I went, went and looked at the form and I went, oh, who's Norwegian Bliss beaten? Um, kind of went from the benchmark into the the group three and it just beaten by Crosshaven when it went to Caulfield last time. And then I kind of went through the field like, what, that, Swats, that's the second favourite. Uh, it's been a bit often, you know. Um, Why is Swats that second favourite? I just noticed that. Don't know. Don't know. Huh. Like it's last, it has raced in good quality races, but it hasn't run that well. Three years um, between wins for and some time, yeah. yeah please. So that, that kind of went. Oh, I prefer to back Norwegian Bliss. Then I went to Written Beauty. I thought oh, it's capable of running a nice race first up. Um, its form's okay, so I thought, yep, yeah, could could entertain that. And then I got into some sort of Kerr Royale, who you know, benchmark seventy eights and. Then some of these other horses, I just couldn't get too excited about. So it brought me back to Norwegian Bliss as the horse to beat here. Had it on top. Uh, main dangers I had was Written Beauty, and I thought Pokari Car um, could run well. Um, might have been a bit of a second up syndrome last start. Uh, there wasn't a lot of place on there. It may improve here um, with an extra hundred. Yes, uh, I. You've missed the winner. It's Larkspur Run. It's the best horse in the race. The form around um, Turath and Brigantine and Meg is all better than this crap. And it's $10. Uh, trials were fine. It comes here, gets camps right on leaders back and is going to be very hard to beat. Uh, I agree with you, Pokari Kari. I think that that form is not too dissimilar to what the favourite brings and it's 17 bucks. So it goes in the quaddy. 
Maybe maybe uh maybe Norwegian Bliss just has much more upside and does just win this with complete control. Um but I was looking I just didn't rate a lot of these. Uh even entertained Bellatrix Black there debuting in Australia, but uh no Larkspur run. I blew it up today, so it's on top for me. We're finishing with thirteen hundred metres benchmark eighty eight with and we're finishing with hopefully a nice horse in Waterford. Um does get J Mac for the first time, which I like. Trials have been good, and inside gate I'm hoping it can camp a bit closer than it had been sitting last prep. That'd be the only concern for me for now, but he's on top. From Kanazawa, who should have won last start, and now gets Nash and is nine bucks. They're the two for me to finish the day with. Think about it, obviously goes into a quaddy though. Beaver? Yeah, I've gone for Waterford as well. I like this horse. Um, got a big wraps on it. I think around the $3 mark is good price here in the last. I think it's going to be super hard to beat. And I won't let Pizarro get under my guard. Uh, I think it's a horse with some ability and these are the types of races it can bob up in. Um, hopefully the right pace here can run well. Beautiful. The quaddy from Randwick, you know, one, first leg, one in secret, five she's a belter, 12 Cinderella days. Second leg, one animo, three law of indices. Third leg, two Norwegian Bliss, three Larkspur Run, ten Bellatrix Black, twelve Kerr Royale, thirteen at Pokari Kari, and we'll come home with one Vranelli, four Waterford, eight Kanazawa, and thirteen Think About It. For progretracing.com.au, my best from Roundwick is race eight, number one, Animo. But uh, I think I've declared it once before and they've won five races. But it's a blue colours day for me. Godolphin to the four tomorrow. Uh, and the value as such will be race nine, number three, Larkspur Run. What about yourself? Yeah, look, I've gone uh, race seven, number one, in secret as my uh, on top of there. I found it hard to find too much value. I thought uh, I'd just put race five, number 10, Espiona. I think it will probably start about $5. Um, so I got it on top. That's Be- my value. Beauty. Um, just a couple from around Australia before we can over to the King in the North. Morphville race four, number five, Jean Valjean, back over there. Very hard to beat. And Ascot race seven, number two, all the King's men in the stakes race there. Beaver, what's happening in Queensland? Yeah, up in Queensland, mate. Hopefully a strike up there um, tomorrow as well. Race three, number one, Tidal Creek. I think it can win... Uh, I'm going race four, number three, Major Arty. Now it's been scratched from Sydney to go up there. I think that uh, is a good line and makes it super hard to beat. Um, race six, number one, Baroque Road. I think it can run well. Second up, uh, about $4 mark there. And to finish off in the last uh, race at nine, number 15, Ned's Gully. Another number uh, $4 shot. Fantastic. Good work, Beaver. Good being tomorrow. Great Thank being you. day. Uh, might even see you if you're lucky. All right, no, don't jump at the idea. All right, I'll um, speak to everyone <laughs> on Wednesday morning. Take care, punters. Uh, good betting this weekend. Uh, enjoy everything else going on. Footy's back. Cricket's looking sad. And uh, UFC, fantastic card from Perth. Take care, guys, and we'll talk soon. Yes.